Hi everyone! Welcome to today's Loop and Learn presentation on bolusing for meals part 2. Today's topic will be how to bolus for complex meals. If you missed our first presentation on bolusing for meals and the carbohydrate screen, it can be found on the Loop and Learn YouTube channel. My name is Sarah Goya and I am one of the Loop and Learn admins. I have been using a DIY system since 2016 and have been looping for the past three years. This next topic came about because the Loop and Learn admins were training tips on how to successfully bolus for carbs, proteins, and fats. We all followed different diets and found that we were all bolusing for carbs, proteins, and fats in a very similar way. We are excited to share what we've learned and hope it brings you meal bolus success also. We will be doing one final presentation on how to bolus for tricky meals as a follow-up to this one. If you like what you hear, please press the like button below and subscribe to our channel to be notified when our next presentation comes out. If you have any questions, please reach out on our Loop and Learn Facebook page or write in the comments below. The Loop app is a do-it-yourself closed-loop algorithm. This presentation is provided to assist you in making your own decisions in consultation with your healthcare professionals regarding your own diabetes self-management. You take full responsibility for building and running the system and do so at your own risk. Please remember that the Loop app is not FDA approved for therapy. Let's begin by reviewing where we are right now. We assume that at this point you've read and reread the Loop docs. You've joined at least one looping community for additional support. You've installed the Loop app on your device and you've tested and retested your core Loop settings. Loop assumes that your basal, insulin sensitivity, and carb ratios are perfect. This is why these settings are very important. Please take time to test and retest all Loop settings as these calculations are key to your success. Okay, so now that we made it here, the focus of this particular presentation is to teach you how to bolus for complex meals for success. When it comes to looping, many loopers struggle with meals. If you've tried out the tactics in part one and aren't seeing the results you'd like, it might be time to dig a little deeper. Today we will be discussing bolusing for meals and entering carbs. And it's important to note that when we refer to carbs now, we will be referring to not just carbohydrates, we'll introduce the concept of also bolusing for proteins and fat. In this presentation, we will go over how to calculate for these carbs, how to deliver the correct amount of insulin at the right time, and how to match the amount of food we eat with correctly timed insulin based on the predictive curve and impact of blood glucose. Let's begin with an overview on bolusing. When looping, basal insulin should cover daily insulin needs and loop will deliver more or less insulin as it attempts to keep blood sugars at normal target range. The basal rate should not cover food or various other special circumstances. If you were to fast, your basal rate should keep you steady within your target range. When food is then added into loop, loop needs to be told the amount of food you have eaten and the absorption time of that food. If the food shows up before insulin starts working, blood glucose levels will rise. If the insulin shows up before the food starts to absorb, blood glucose levels will drop. Now let's take a look at more complex meals or even low carb meals. Hands down, you will get better, more consistent results if you take into consideration the number of grams of carbohydrates, proteins, and fat that is in your meal. Our goal is to eliminate blood glucose spikes when eating. This can be achieved several different ways. One way is by using loop with the correct bolus techniques. Another is by diet modifications like choosing to eat low carb or lower carb meals. Another way is by using inhalable insulin like Afreza or some of the newer faster acting insulins like Fiast or Lumjev. These are all great things to have in your diabetes tool bag. Now let's think back to presentation one where we use the example of that turkey sandwich. Here we learned that for a turkey sandwich, a four hour absorption time worked much better than two. You might have asked yourself, why does the time make any difference? Well, it's because of how protein and fat break down. Despite what your endocrinologist and dietitian might tell you, type one diabetics have observed that protein and fat do raise blood sugar. This is why in loop we enter carbs, 
with quotes, and not just carbohydrates. So why are proteins and fats so important? Well, protein converts to glucose slowly via gluconeogenesis. And when protein is eaten with no carbs, it actually converts to glucose even faster. Fats convert to glucose via gluconeogenesis and fatty acids. When fat is ingested with carbs, it slows the absorption of those carbs. Activity level and alcohol consumption also may have an effect on the absorption of carbs, but we're only focusing on protein and fat right now. This slide is a very detailed diagram explaining gluconeogenesis. It is basically showing how our bodies are amazing and extremely efficient. Not only will our bodies turn carbohydrates into glucose, but our bodies can also turn proteins and fats into glucose. Let's try adding in the following calculation for protein grams into loop. Entering the protein as carb grams, try entering 25% of the protein grams of your meal as carb grams with a four to five hour absorption and enter them beginning in one to two hours from when you actually eat. To do this, look at the arrow in the diagram, click on the time and scroll it forward here. As a warning, many people think they have correct carb ratios and basils in their pumps, but they're actually setting them artificially high and covering protein and fat blood sugar rises with these incorrect settings. You might need to take this into consideration and re-examine your carb ratios and basils during this time. Finally, this suggested 25% of protein grams is a starting point that has worked for many, but your diabetes may vary, so proceed with extreme caution whenever you alter your insulin dosage. Now for meal entries for fat, enter 10% of fat grams as carb grams. Use an absorption time of 4 plus hours. And once again, start the food absorption time 1 to 2 hours into the future. This 10% figure is just a starting point. Your diabetes may vary. Let's revisit our friend, the turkey sandwich, and walk through this together now. Here's the turkey sandwich. Two slices of bread, four ounces of turkey, two ounces of Swiss cheese, lettuce, and two teaspoons of mayonnaise, for example. Here it is, now entered into the app MyFitnessPal. We see this meal is 44 carbs, 48 grams of protein, and 24 grams of fat. Now let's calculate the bolus of our turkey sandwich. Based on the percentages we just talked about, we now have 44 grams of carbs, 12 protein grams, and 2 fat grams. This might seem confusing, but stick with me here. Now we're looking into how we're going to dose for this sandwich. Anytime the meal is of a considerable number of carbs, in this case we're at 44 grams of carbs, you'll most likely need to use some kind of a pre-bolus since insulin works too slow in comparison to the absorption of all of these carbs. For the pre-bolus, you can use the pre-meal or override button for one hour before eating. You may also want to give a partial bolus for your meal about 15 to 20 minutes before you start eating. Some people even do both, especially if you're out of your target range. You're going to use the carbohydrate and protein fat breakdown and enter this meal as two separate carb entries. The 44 grams of carbohydrates should be entered into loop at the time you eat for three hours. After you finish this entry, immediately enter the 14 grams of carb equivalents 1.5 hours from the current time with a five hour absorption. Side note, if your meal includes large amounts of fats, you may want to use three entries or an even longer absorption time than this. This is just a starting point. Your diabetes may vary. You will probably need to test out many meals until you're absolutely sure of your timing and what protein and fat percentages work best for you. Now it's time to analyze what we see. First, Look at the carbohydrate screen and see when the meal started absorbing in comparison to when it was entered. Next, take a look at the absorption time and how many grams of carbs loop observed. Next, we need to decide if we need to make any adjustments. First, do you need to adjust your pre-bolus strategy? Did the meal outpace the insulin or was the timing correct? Do you need to adjust your absorption time? What did the carbohydrate screen show? Do you need to adjust your fat and protein percentages? If you went low, let's also look at your carb ratio during this time. Do you need to check portion sizes by using a food scale? 
Until you get a hang of this new way of bolusing, keep asking yourself these questions. The link where you can print out these PDFs is below. We hope that this was helpful to you. Please check out the additional links listed here, post your comments and questions below, or on the Loop and Learn Facebook group. Thank you for listening.